Hi, I'm Mallory Van Fossen, and I'm going to tell you guys about the Michelle Martinko case, which occurred in Cedar Rapids in 1979. So this is a pretty old case. It's 2021 right now, and this is a really old case, but I live in Charles City, so it's only two hours away from here, and I figured that that would be a pretty good um, case to do my little story on. So um, this was a murder, and it happened 40 years ago. So they found 18-year-old Michelle Martinko in a parking lot stabbed to death in her family's car. So they found her body in her parents' tan 1972 Buick in the Cedar Rapids Westdale Mall parking lot at around 4 a.m. on December 19th, December 20th, 1979. She went to the mall after a choir event looking for a new coat, and then that's when she lost her life. So... Um, police said that she was stabbed at least eight times in the face and chest, and she had wounds on her hands, showing that she put up a fight. Detectives found no handprint, fin fingerprints or handprints or weapons to identify the killer, and they also said Martinko had not been robbed by any evidence that they found. She wasn't robbed. She was just murdered. And by the number of wo wounds, particularly to Michelle's face, she... The killer took passion in his crime, and in other words, he considered this homicide personal in nature. So that means that he liked what he was doing, he didn't think it was bad, he thought that it was good what he was doing, and he just, he didn't think it was a bad thing, which it was. And then, eventually the case went cold, and there were hundreds of people interviewed, and they were cleared and tested and they were asked if they knew anybody that knew anything or if they knew anything if they witnessed anything if they had heard people talking about it and had any information on it and just hundreds of people were interviewed because they wanted to figure this case out and then eventually as the investigation closed um, a ten thousand dollar reward was offered because they were really trying to figure this out and since nobody was stepping up and saying anything they decided maybe money was the way so then on June 19th, 1980, police, uh, police, excuse me, police released a composite sketch developed based on descriptions provided by two witnesses who had believed this man had stabbed Michelle. And the sketch indicated that this man was white. He was in his late teens or early 20s, so a pretty young guy, um, weighing between 165 and 175 pounds and standing at about six feet tall. So this was an okay description, but at the same time, that's a lot of middle-aged men that live in a big town in, like Cedar Rapids. And so, I mean, it helped, but it also wasn't a lot because like I said, there's a lot of people that, are, that look like that and are that old in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And then um, during the original investigation, there was a list of 80 possible suspects that were more more or less um, fit the description or anything like that. So then they assumed that they would be more willingly to say anything. So then they interviewed them and over 60, 60 of them were tested and cleared. So no, no um, luck there. And then um, the other 20, I'm not entirely sure where the other 20 went. And then using newer technology, Cedar Rapids police created profiles from DNA procured from case evidence in 2006. So they used newer technology technology later on in the year, years way after the case was closed, still trying to figure this out. And then investor, investigators said that they did find um, blood on the gear shifter in the car and on Michelle's black dress that she was wearing when she was murdered. And they believed that this blood could be put into a DNA test and um, be figured out who it was. And then, um, so they took that and then the Cedar Rapids Police Department then used DNA genetic genealogical, excuse me, research to narrow down the profile down to a specific pool of suspects and which... One of those included Jerry Burns. So Jerry Burns was then arrested in his Manchester, Iowa business on 
December 19th, 2018, which was the 39th anniversary of Michelle's death, which I think is pretty crazy because the DNA that was on Michelle's dress matched the DNA that was, or matched DNA, Jerry's DNA because the um, detective found Jerry and took a DNA sample off of something that he had taken a drink of and matched those two DNA samples. And then Jerry Burns was arrested for the first degree murder of Michelle Martinko.